So in terms of the digital identity, like once you provide the identity, can they bring the identity to also use like banking or like other like a yeah. traditional financial yeah, system? Yeah, so, well, so we're right? using something called the DID standard, the digital identifier. And the great part about DID is that it's a W3C standard, the same body that standardizes HTML and CSS and all these other languages. So it's an mm. open standard. It's there's it's patent free. Uh, more than 50 companies use it, including Microsoft and IBM, and mm. we use it as well. And it's a, it's a blockchain agnostic and infrastructure agnostic. So mm. you can use DITs on Bitcoin, you can use DITs on Ethereum, you can use DITs on Cardano. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you can use DITs in legacy infrastructure, like for banking identity, banking compliance exchanges, and so forth. Mm. So our belief is over the next five to 10 years, this will become the dominant ID standard for all identifiers, whether it be government issued IDs or banking IDs and so forth. Wow. And so what's beautiful is once somebody has access to that infrastructure, it's interoperable. Mm -hmm. So when we bring them into Cardano, then they're actually now brought into the world ID system effectively by that. And so that, wow. that means they can move uh, without permission from one system to another system and carry with them their reputation, their credentials, mm -hmm. the certifications, yeah. and so forth. And you get a beautiful economy of scale with DID-based systems. KYC, so that's know mm -hmm. your customer, which every bank has to do if they're going to do business with somebody. Mm -hmm. It could cost as little as 10 cents per person. Oh. So the cost to identify an entire country like Ethiopia, document permitting, could be $10 million for all 100 million people that you would, you would identify. So it's it's a amazing order of magnitude. And it used to be many dollars per person, like $5, $10. Mm -hmm. So you see orders of magnitude reduction with these tools and technology. The other thing is DIDs are user-generated. So instead of me creating a DID and giving it to you, you generate it mm. yourself and you can have multiple DIDs that are contextual to business domains. So you can have mm. a DID for government authentication, but then a, a DID for World of Warcraft and your <laughs> logon. And then you could have a DID for your, you know, your banking software, and then maybe a DID for your online presence and so forth and alias there. And you can maintain all mm. of those credentials and create all of those at your discretion and have different reputations and levels of anonymity with these types of things. So the government will probably be your actual name tied to your passport, but maybe your gaming identity is an alias. And nobody knows who you are, these types of things. I so see. you can do all of that with the same technology.